What up? Welcome back to the Rap Throwback. It's your boy Diz Megatron here with Soundwave, aka Dre Forty Ounce. What up? What up? How's it going, man? It's going back all right, for man. Another Rap Throwback. Hell yeah. yeah! Out here in the dog days of summer. It's starting. Oh to, yeah. Starting to finish out though. I'm glad. Yeah, we're getting some of those cooler days now. Some 80 degree weather. Yeah, man. I don't mind it. Uh, football weather. Yeah. Got football, the last preseason game coming up this weekend. Yep, yep. I saw that your Broncos named a quarterback. Yeah, man. Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah. He's Teddy legit. Two gloves. <laughs> yeah, he's hey, he legit. You know, if our defense is as good as it was when we won Super Bowl 50, Teddy Bridgewater can get us into the playoffs. Yeah. You know, so that's the way I'm looking at it. It's not going to be explosive football can be beat them up defensive football I'm yeah okay with that we'll see how how it goes i mean that's how you stop these uh elite passers is with a good defense our secondary is looking really good so yeah you got von miller back um, von miller and bradley chubb are finally going to play in the same same year crazy so let's let's see what we can do I really didn't want Drew Locke to win that anyways. Uh, yeah. I, I couldn't stand him. Not your guy? Nah. <laughs> but, yeah, man, I'm excited to get the season started and see how it goes. First nice. three games are winnable. They're tough, man. They got to go. They got to go two and one at least. Yeah. They got to go two and one to have a chance. Otherwise, it could be an ugly start, ugly season. Who knows? Yeah, we got to come out first three games at least two and one. We should come out of there three and zero, but we'll see. Yeah, I think it's the the Giants, the Jags, and the Jets. I think. Is it? Something like Is that, that it? Giants, Jags, Jets. I'll have to double check. Hmm. Um, That's cool. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Falls around the corner. The year is almost ready to wrap up, man. We're looking at the final stretch here. I'm not sure about what's coming out um, next. I mean, we've got some good releases out already dropped, you know. Dog Pound, um, of course, yeah. Nas. Jeez, uh, Lloyd Banks did his thing. Um, what else is on the radar? I know Cocaine keeps saying that his shit's going to drop. I'm waiting on that. And um, Be real. That's Be real right. drop. Yeah, have you heard that? I listened to like three songs this morning. Is it on Spotify? Yeah, it hit today. Okay. Oh, let me tell it or not tell you something. Who's the producer on and it? Scott Storch. Okay, that's right. Yeah, so the Scott Storch and the Be Real collaboration should be good, man. Yeah, man. When I read that, I immediately looked for it on Spotify and I couldn't find it. I don't think it was there yet. Mm. So I was like, all right, well. Should be the there. 10-song yeah. album. Yeah, I bet it's good, man. I, I heard the first three and you know, it sounded good. You got Rick Ross on there, Crazy Bone. Yeah. Um, Crazy Bone's on it, huh? That should be dope. Crazy Bone and Be Real. Yeah, mm, I yeah. bet it's a weed song. I'm just taking a guess. I have a feeling there's a lot of weed songs on there. <laughs> there's probably a lot of weed songs. <laughs> That's cool. I, I liked his last oh, yeah. uh, solo album. Well, the one that he did with the uh, skull on the front, I liked it. Um, yeah, what was that one called? I think, uh, I, think I might have ran into one of those songs today. Six Minutes was the title. Six or Minutes, like yeah. Yeah, I can't remember. Skull and, was it? No. Was it Skull Smoking and Mirrors? Smoke and Mirrors, there you go. That was a dope uh, album. Had some Corrupt on there, too. Yeah, you know, that's one I don't listen to enough. I know it's dope, but it's just never on my radar. Yeah, that's one of my must-have downloads whenever I get a new tablet or phone. and I'm going through the Spotify library. Yeah, gotta have be real. Dope. So, yeah, slow week on the rap front, you know. I saw that Death Row tweeted that... Uh, Corrupt Against the Grain is uh, 16 years old on August Whoa. 23rd. I'm like, damn, really? 
That's crazy, it huh? Feel like it, man. I know. It feels kind of like ten, maybe, but sixteen. That was yeah. Nuts. That's wild. Yeah, they got a lot of cool stuff in that store. I want that red jersey that they have in there. Yeah, they got a red like tank top jersey or basketball jersey. Oh, I bet that's uh, tight. Looks really dope. I saw they have some shoes. I don't know if you've seen the shoes that they have, the sneakers. No, I didn't see the shoes. Like, That's dope. The left one says death and the right one says row. I'm like, dope. Oh, nice. Death row. It's like, man, coming out some fresh yeah. gear out here. I'm going to have to get some gear from there. Yeah. They they keep selling the, these NFTs. What the hell are those? NFTs. You, you know what these NFTs are? They're like those digital trading cards or something like that. I don't know what that is. And they hold value, I guess. Like I saw that one of these sold for thirty bucks, and right away another dude like flipped it for one hundred and fifty. And I was like, "What? Is this is, is this like some know. cryptocurrency shit?" I think it has something to do with crypto, or it's like crypto similar to it. Jeez. Um, but yeah, they're limited edition. There's only a certain amount of them made, um, and then it comes with exclusive content somehow. Like space age shit, man. Like uh, the, the Eminem one that that one dude bought, and then he made a song. Yeah, that white rapper. Yeah, that McDonald dude. Is that his name, McDonald? McSomething? Something. Is it Tom McDonald or Tom something? Tom McDonald. <laughs> no, don't, don't quote me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Tom McDonald. Tom He's a white sure. guy with dreads, man. Yeah. Looks homeless. But I don't know. I, I gotta look more into that NFT thing. Is it Death Row released like two or three of them? That's interesting. Like, uh, it doesn't look like anything special. It's just like a low rider hitting switches, and then it does like a close up on the on the Death Row logo on the hood. Dope. And then it's got music playing in the background. Looks cool. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Someone needs to tell me why it's worth thirty dollars. Hmm. Speaking of space age shit. What's up with this new <laughs> Kanye record that he's coming out that you can? Donda? Yeah, like I guess you can manipulate the music or something, like remix it or mix See, it all up. I haven't heard. I know that Mike Dean and Kanye have been working on this for quite a while. Wow. Um, but I didn't know that you were going to be able to manip- manipulate the music. Yeah, I think it might be coming out on a on some kind of custom device or something. I don't know, man. I just read the headline. I was like, that sounds impossible. But not if it's on its own little iPod or whatever. Right. Well, even if it's an app, right? Maybe you yeah. download it. Maybe like it's an, an app. app. And then the app lets you do stuff to it. Yeah. Huh. Very interesting. You know, that's... Yeah. I mean, I could see that in a way revolutionizing, like, a way an artist can make money. You know, let the user, you know, play with the music. Yeah. Download, download their app. It's like a CD on your phone. Boom. Hmm. Something to think about. I don't know. I would like to do that. You know. Yeah, it'd be cool to be able to play do that with a lot of shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Make well, your own mixes. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if uh, he's letting people just pop out their own shit on YouTube using it. You know. Because there's always those copyright strikes and everything. Right. That would be very generous of him, and I highly doubt it. But it's interesting anyways. I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah, I haven't yeah. heard much about that. But that sounds like a cool idea. Yeah. So, uh, other than that, man, I ain't heard much else from the hip-hop front this week. Yeah, me either. I'm trying to think. No, I think that's about it. Yeah. I have been hearing about Rick Ross and the headlines. He keeps popping up in the news. But they're for, like, trivial things, nothing too important. Like, it's usually usually about Rick Ross, a million dollars for whatever. Like, his cars, or he mows his own lawn and saves millions. Shit like that. Uh, just flossy shit. Yeah, flossy shit. 
I used to follow him on Instagram, but he posts way too much. Way too much? <laughs> way too much. Calm down, Rick Ross. Calm down. Crazy, man. Um, yeah, man. That's about it, man. I checked out that uh, Nas, King's Disease Part 2. Last week, we were on Part 1. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, yeah. We've been uh we've been pretty brave the last few weeks, man. Just checking out new music, really. Right. Like we got not really knowing what to expect either. Yeah, you know we did that Snoop album that he dropped in 2019. Right. And we did King's Disease one. Now we're on King's Disease two. So it's been cool though. It's been cool. I feel like I'm I'm catching up. You know, you know uh, what I like about it is it gives me time to to listen to the album and appreciate it. It's almost kind of like reprogramming the way I listen to music, yeah. In a way, but uh, you know, in the past, all these new albums come out, I hear it once or twice, and then I move on and I start listening to all the old shit I used to listen to, anyways. You know, I never really gave the new stuff right a chance. Yeah, but, me neither. Uh, yeah, like going I... through it when we're doing these podcasts. You get to download it, soak it all in, and uh, I don't know, just really give it like a true listen. I guess I don't really give them a true listen Yeah. Um, for this. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel you, man. I'm kind of like, I ain't going to listen to that new Snoop Dogg. I heard it. I heard snippets. Fuck that. But, you know, right. I give it a fair listen a few times. I'm like, you know what? This ain't too bad. I'm going to keep it in the rotation. Then same with the Nas albums here. Um, I liked, uh, you know, I, I gave them both a listen, of course, over the last couple of weeks and I'm glad I did, you know, they weren't, I didn't think they were horrible. Like I was afraid of cause of, uh, the producer I didn't know of and you know, the features and shit, some of them I don't recognize, right. but yeah, it's kind of cool to dive into these new records and, uh, you know, we'll just keep at it. Like these new guys that are not new guys, but these, uh, old cats that are coming out with new albums um definitely have to keep our pulse on them you know check them out because they still a throwback oh, is a sure, throwback. You know, snoop it, is a throwback, a throwback. Yeah. yeah so anyways the cover is different than the last one which was like right. a painting i'm not sure why he just went with his face on this one um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. A lot that. more simplistic, yeah. Yeah, simplistic. Um, after winning the Grammy, I guess his face is a seller, you know. Um, I don't know. I can't read his mind, but uh, it did throw me off that the cover was so different. Um, pretty simple. Probably his most simple. Uh, color cover ever. color scheme somewhat similar, though color scheme wise, you know. It's, yeah a little similar but you know different direction as far as just i mean he just had an art a piece of art in the last one and this yeah was, uh, more of a picture yeah which he normally does a an album cover like this anyways right he'll put his face on his old records you know like but he's wearing like a hood usually or geez he, he always manipulates his face to something weird um like we had the uh, Pharaoh album on, on, I think it's called I Am, where he looked like he was an Egyptian Pharaoh or something. And we got uh, the yep, yep. Nostradamus is where he's wearing the hood. He looks like a Jedi. Um, then yep. he started getting a little more simple uh, around, geez, I don't know, Stillmatic, where he was just chilling in front of, you know, New York. Oh, yeah, I remember that, yep. He's, like, on a wall or something. Yeah, and, of course, life is good. He's just sitting there, you know, with the suit and a wedding dress. Yeah. Hip-hop was dead, was a little bit more, a little more creative. Yeah, so he does usually put his face on record covers. Um, Just the last one he didn't. So, and since this is part two, it is a little different, you know, than than that. So, but I get it. It's cool. Um, yeah, diving in though, what kind of expectations did you have? Obviously, maybe the same ones I did that this is going to sound like his uh, King's Disease Part One. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of how I went into it, just expecting more of the same. Yeah. Um, hit, hit Boy, you know, being pretty much the sole producer on both, you know, he's, he gets a little bit of help on some of the tracks, but, um, yeah. you know, just more of that style, which was impressive last time. Um, you know, the way he samples stuff, you know, that yeah. slowed down sample with like some reverse effects and just. Yeah, the underwater um, sound. That's what I right. I sent, what I get, you know, or I notice that he does that every so often. Mm-hmm. Um, so they got the, the flanger effect there, and then mm-hmm. um, yeah, just kind of more of the same vibe, more on the chill level, you know. So, yeah, uh, just more or less the same stuff. Yeah, well, why don't we uh, check it same out? Vibe, anyway. Yeah, want to run through it? Let's do a listen. How about that? And. Uh, We'll give our thoughts track by track here. So track number one, The Pressure. You know, I thought that, I thought this was a a slow start for a record. It's a decent track, but I thought it was a slow start. Um, That was my initial uh, thought on it anyways. But, you know, it's not a bad track. I like the track. I like the beat. Um, you know, pretty simple. Um, but sometimes less is more. It was a good way to kick the album off, you know. The yeah. content wasn't too crazy, you know. But uh, not bad for an intro track. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Now, for me... The second track can make or break an album, and I think you did good on Death Row East. You know, the second yeah. track. I think they really found that Death Row vibe that they were looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, the storytelling is cool. Seeing it from Nas's perspective, you know, kind of opens your eyes onto what was really going on out there. And I didn't know that Death Row was getting that big, man. But, of course, they were. They were fire right. back then. They were the... I mean, they were something else, man. Well, the idea with uh, Death Row East was kind of like Death Row was going to end the West and East War by uniting the coast. So they're going to have Death Row West, Death Row East, and they were going to basically take rap over that way. But uh, another thing I liked about the beat was that Hit Boy studied Johnny J for it. So I dig that. I don't listen to a lot of Johnny J stuff, but I can tell that the drums were somewhat Johnny J inspired. So yeah. that's pretty cool. I like the strings in it, man. The strings really reminds me of a death row track for some reason. I like how yeah. he, he gives Shook props, you know, he doesn't bring him, he doesn't tear his name down or anything like that. And he gives the outlaws props. And a lot of people will forget about the outlaws in the midst yeah. of all of this, you know? So he's just being real, man. He's, he's not just giving props to the big guys. He's uh he's keeping it real. I like that. He's like really telling it how he saw it, and it's an important piece of history. It's dope. You know that's yeah, that's that exactly. shit that man we loved that shit back then, man. Can never be well, duplicated. This track touches on one of the biggest events in hip hop history. Arguably, yeah. you know, like and he was in the thick of it. They were gonna meet and everything, you know. So. Yeah. It's crazy how close that was to happening. Yeah, it's uh it's a dope track and I appreciate it. Um I think anytime we can get like a perspective like that, it's almost like a history lesson or something out of his journal and I'm like, that's dope, man. I'll take it. All right. Then we got forty side. Track number three. Thought it was a yeah. another slow beat. It was a lot of cool shit going on in the beat, though. Um, what'd you think about it? Uh, see, the beat was really cool to me because, like you said, there's a lot going on. You know, it is a slower track, so it's got that really chill vibe to it. But yeah, the drums, the drums are really bouncy too. So it has like a upbeat bass line to it. So yeah, and uh, this what is... Hit Boy did here. Mm-hmm. Go, Go ahead. ahead. I was just saying, what Hit Boy did (laughs) was pretty brilliant here. Yeah. Yeah. He switches it up at the end of this track, right? Like a couple times. 
Is this a little the... bit? Yeah. Yeah. No, the one that switched up a lot was actually uh, rare. Oh, okay, you're right. You're right. But, uh, yeah. But the way that Nas raps at first, he switches up his flow a bit, um, which is kind of cool. Because I always think. Yeah. Like... So this one. Go ahead. Uh. I'm trying to think. No, I'm thinking of a different track. My bad. Yeah. I don't remember how that this one flips on the beat. I don't remember how that part went, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I Hit know. Boy is just flipping his tracks constantly, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's hard to keep them all in memory the way he does it. And he almost does it to a point where the track sounds like it's another track. Um, I did find myself looking at my uh, phone, like saying, is this the same track? Is this the end of the track? Is this a new track? What track is this? You right. know, when I first heard this CD, uh, the first couple times, um, I was surprised. So it's cool, man. It's cool. All right. Let's go on to track number four here, EPMD2. So, I like the way this beat. Start. Yeah, the beat is dope, man. This is probably his most gangsta beat on here, I'm thinking. We need to reference the closed casket flow. Hey, but, uh, what's up with that? Yeah, is that a little Isham reference? I don't know. Closed casket flow. They said... Um, <clears throat> Nas, Eric Sermon, and PMD, Bucket on Low Like, Eric and Parrish, Close Casket Flow, Y'all Niggas Get Deaded, they don't, uh, I don't know, man. Maybe they got a Close Casket track. I didn't do my homework on EPMD, but yeah, I like how I they sound, either. man. They sound like a couple of hoodlums, man. They sound pissed. And I wonder if they rap like that all the time. I don't know. That's what I was curious about, too. Like, but one of them know, had a dope line. Switching. Mm -hmm. where he talked about the piece of shit fly like on Pence's head. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fly. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's dope. <laughs> um, you know, finishing that off with Eminem isn't my favorite thing ever, um, but whatever, you know, at least he's last. He's long, though, and uh, yeah. I just don't get, like, that excited like everybody else when Eminem gets on your track. I'm just like, okay. So... Well, I don't know. Eminem wasn't really saying much, you know? So, like, to me, it's, like, the gimmick of how fast Eminem can rap, like, wore off the first time I heard it a while ago or yeah, last year. Yeah, how fast and how was. can I flip words and whatever. Right. And how corny can so, I sound. To me, it wasn't, I don't know. Unfortunately for me, I think once the verse that verse hits, it's got to get skipped. I know, right? I'll probably skip the track just because I know I'm going to skip it later anyways. Yeah. Um, I kind of think that the one rapper who could jump in instead would be like Hospin. I've heard Hospin a few times, and yeah. he kind of reminds me of like an Eminem-like guy, just not as bad. But... You know, I don't know what you want to call that type of rapper, a shock value rapper or something, you know? I don't get it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, the track could have been good without Eminem, right? I mean, EPMD yeah. thought that they didn't even know Eminem was going to be on it. So yeah, no, they didn't. That makes me wonder, you know, if the track was just supposed to be them and not. But yeah, I think it would have been better without Eminem, just EPMD. If they, if they all got a second verse, it would have been really dope. But the beat changes up really dope right here. Oh, when, uh, yeah, during Eminem's verse? Yeah, a little bit ago. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that might actually save the track, you know, make me not skip it. Um, And that's all Hit Boy right there, man. I think EPMD, Hit Boy really do carry this track, man. You could have put, and maybe that's why they threw Eminem in there, because you couldn't have fucked it up by now. Um, I mean, I don't think they think Eminem would have fucked it up, but seeing how Eminem isn't my no. cup of tea, I might be able to live with it. So, well, I wonder if there was like a, 
you know, purpose for M to be on there. You know, a lot of people are scared to get Eminem featured on their track because Eminem is going to quote unquote kill them on their own shit. Oh yeah, he's going to murder them. Yeah. So I don't know if he was just trying to make a statement of like I ain't afraid to do it or I don't know. Yeah, I could, I could hold my own. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So track number five, then rare. What'd you think yeah. about that track? Rare was dope. I liked it. I mean, they really go into how versatile they are, um, flow wise, beat wise, and you know, you kind of hear it in the lyrics talking about the versatility. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I think I like the beat. I like the song. And I think the placement like of every, it is really good too. Yeah. Every verse has a different beat. Yeah, that's true. You're right. So that was really cool about this track. It's rare. Yeah. I thought Nas's lyrics were on point on this track too. I remember as I was listening to it in the gym, I was, you know, analyzing the shit he was saying. I was like, man, Nas is killing it still. So it's a good track, man. An all out good track for uh, Nas. All right. So then the next track, YKTV. Pop right. off. This beat YKTV is. YKTV stands for You Know the Vibe. You Know the Vibe. How about that bass on here, man? It's crazy. Yeah. I think. Bass is crazy. Yeah. It's kind of simple, but it. You know, like you were saying, you know, sometimes less is more. And uh, this one is cool. It's a little gangsta, but not the most Nos gangsta. At least that's the vibe I get on it as I listen to it. Um, yeah, they're kind of just flossing on that track for the most part. Yeah, I think it's it's that arrogant, lazy, gangsta type of flow. Mm-hmm. Usually it's reserved for the new concept in it. Good mm-hmm. baseline. Yeah, they could bump it up in the club. And the way that Hit Boy is hitting those keys, man, I just love the way he does it. Like he's doing it here, and it sounds uh, it sounds dope. I don't know how else to describe it, really. He's doing good. Man. Yeah, he's good. He's good at adding uh, that atmosphere atmospheric uh, type sound to the background of the music. Yeah. All right, let's hit up the next track, Store Run. Cool. Nas really is bringing it back to some of that uh, old school type of Nas. I don't even know if it's yeah. that old school Nas, but it's just that old soul flavor that he likes to have. But it gives you that vibe, you know, with the sample that they're using. I don't know what track they're sampling there, but... Um... Yeah, you got that old soul sound going on and cool little bass line, kind of bouncy. Um, yeah, I, I dig it. Yeah, this is one of those tracks where Hit Boy was able to channel that Nas sound that people like or that has helped just, bring him up. Right, and, you know, it kind of goes in line with what Nas is rapping about, kind of like, you know, grown up earlier or Queens in the 90s. Yeah. Queens in the 90s. Mm. All right. Next track we got here is Moments Then. The eighth track. I thought it was chill. It was a pretty chill track. You know, it's kind of a fun track. One of those tracks where Nas just kind of is just spilling his thoughts. Yeah, reminiscing or, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's a he's a nostalgic rapper, man. And uh, It's a good track to be able to do that on, too. I thought that the beat matches with the vibe or the content that he's rapping about. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool, man. It's got some of a, I don't know if you want to call it jazz or what. It's definitely got some Hit Boy keys on there. And uh, just sounds like some good old New York shit from Nas. Moments. So, yeah, let's go on to the next track then, Nobody. This is uh, track number nine featuring Miss Lauren Hill. Um, it's been a minute since we heard her. At least yeah. for me, it has. Definitely for me, too. What'd you so, think yeah, of this she track? She kind of makes a comeback. Um, 
you know, I would say it's like one of the standouts for me, but you know, it, it does exactly what Nas and Lauren Hill are supposed to do, you know? Yeah. So, um, it's kind of like that more of a East coast flavor. And I thought Lauren Hill might have some vocals on it as far as like seeing it on the hook or something, but she's just here to rap, which is cool. It's cool to hear her rap, but, uh, not a bad track. I dig it. Yeah. Uh, I agree. It's not like a standout track. Um, it was dope to hear Lauren Hill rap. I thought she did really good. I liked her, her verse anyways. And uh, it makes me want to hear some more Lauren Hill. Like if she came out the record, I would check it out, man. I would check it out. Right. Um, I don't know how old she is or what she's got going on, but who cares, man? You sound good. Do your thing. So Yeah, man. I can't imagine it takes too long for her to write a rap. Yeah. Then the 10th track, No Phony Love, featuring Charlie Wilson. This is a good track, really. This is a great track. Yeah, this is cool. I think Charlie Wilson yeah. is used well on here. What do you think? Yeah, Charlie Wilson was placed really good in that track, and I, I like it, too. It's kind of like a upbeat, like, love story type thing or a song about love. Or, yeah. But it's cool, man. It, it definitely has its place on the album. I think it fits in there really good. Yeah, I like the beat too. Um, yeah, Hip Boy just keeps killing it, man. He's he's a uh, he's just doing really good, man. I, I don't know. I I probably said it like a hundred times already, but he's dope. Next track, Brunch on Sundays, kind of continues on the upbeat uh, attitude that we're getting at this point in the record. You know, this is like the fourth quarter, the start of the fourth quarter, really. Yeah. And so uh, it was kind of a day in the life type track. Yeah, another one of those. It's a fun track, I think. Um, you know, again, my first time hearing Blast. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. First time hearing him, Blast. He did good. He did his thing. Hit Boy does his thing on the beat. You know, I just love him on the piano and the way he's hitting keys, man. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate the beats for sure. At least, uh, damn, at least on this record so far. Um, I mean, at this point, this is the 11th song. So right now, a lot of records could either like just feel like they've overstayed their welcome with 11. Like they should have yeah. stopped at 11 or 12. But the placement of the tracks and the tracks themselves are really keeping it from getting too tired, in my opinion, right here. Um, yeah, Brunch on Sundays, fun track, you know. The next track. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Count Me In. Uh, I like this track. This one's a little bit darker. It, uh, you know, brings back. I'm trying to remember. It's, it's almost, I don't know if you want to say it's grimier. But it's a darker track, and I like the way that the vo the background vocals are placed, and what Hit Boy's doing here. It's a good Nas track. But yeah, this one the beat's pretty chill. I don't remember if this one changed up or not. I don't but, believe um, it does, man. I'm pretty sure it doesn't change up at all. Not nothing like nothing as drastic as we've seen earlier in the album. Right. You know, the beat stays pretty consistent. I mean, it evolves and more elements are added, but it doesn't completely switch up to where you're like, what track is this? And that's cool, though. I, I like the track the way it is. So, anyways, let's go up to composure. What'd you think of uh, track 13, composure? Yeah, so Hit Boy's on this one, which is cool. It's the first yeah. time I've heard him. Um, but it's pretty cool, you know? This one's kind of more upbeat. This is the one with the trumpets, right? Yeah. Yeah, this one has yeah, that jazz so, flavor, man. Yeah, you know, it's kind of a pick-me-up track, you know? So, not too bad. I don't mind this track. 
I mean, I think it fits right in with what Nas would do on, you know, a Nas album for sure. Yeah. This is right up his alley. Yeah, I think this is a good Nas track. Um, it's right up his alley, like you said, and Hit Boy is uh, really channeling uh, that Nas sound or what Nas wants. And, you know, like I said earlier, that I feel like Hit Boy is almost like able to get into Nas's head and pretend like if Nas was a producer, this is what he would do. I guess I'm just right. guessing here because Nas's library is just filled with a lot of these jazzy, like elevator music tracks. So, you know, hit boys nailing it, but he's keeping it fresh too, though. So then we got my Bible. I think they're a good combination. Yeah. They're, they're, they're proven to really be a good combination. Number 14, my Bible. We got the organ going on. We got that crazy bass going on in this track. This yeah. is one of the standouts, I think. Yeah. I think the yeah, lyrics so are this dope. one reminds me of some West Coast music. Um, really reminds me of something that would be on Games album. Yeah. But, uh, I like the vibe. I like the message. You know, it's just kind of, uh, you know, there's a code and there's a. Yeah. You know, it stays true to Nasa's character, you know? how he, he, he likes to spit out these, uh, these code, these lessons right. every now and then, you know, carry on tradition and things like that, you know? So it's right up his alley to be able to do this track. It's a dope track though. One of my favorites here. Yeah. Good Beat one. is good too. I like what hit boys doing here. He's hitting those organs. And uh, let's see, did we say the Chicago Chicago guy was doing the background vocals or something on here? Yeah. Um, what was his name again? I okay. thought he... It I thought, is DJ the Chicago Kid. DJ the Chicago Kid. Yeah, he sounds pretty good. He was placed really well, I think. All right. Then <clears throat> the last track, Nas is Good. What do you think about that track? Good way to end the album. Um, hold on one second here. I feel like when I first, or as I'm hearing this last track, I'm my brain is starting to wrap around... Um, hit boy style like I'm starting to be able to recognize it you know and I don't know how to really explain it or nail it but I know it when I hear it and uh, this is kind of definitely some good hit boy stuff yeah I like it it's a good way to send the album off it's upbeat I feel like he had like a strong end of the album too um, so yeah man Good shit for King's Disease. Um, not really like in order, like part one, where like you had like a track that referenced the beginning and the end and stuff. Yeah. Um, like what was it? The Disease, King's Disease, and then The Cure, if I remember right. Yeah, that's right. That was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. They didn't really follow a specific theme for King's Disease 2 that I could catch on to. Anymore. No, there were a couple lyrics where he kind of referenced King's disease, but made it more of a mental state. Um, yeah. You know, in the last one, he went through the mental state, of course, but also the, the real, actually, King's disease, the physical state of it, briefly, which made it interesting. Um, but would you make this a part two of part one? Or do you think it should have got its own title? Um. You know, I think it fits good as a part two just because you got Hit Boy on the beat. I think that if you were to put the two albums and play them back to back, they complement each other really well. Yeah, I um, could see that. I, I agree. And it's really special these days when you have a producer and a rapper like just do an entire project. I mean, one is great, but two, that's, you know, unheard yeah, of anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, I would consider this uh, a two-part album for sure. I would consider them a, 
like to me, it's like one project that just took a little bit of time to get the second part out. Like a year. That's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. I think it was almost exactly a year. Huh? Almost. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so, yeah, I think they, the other one doesn't sound, um, I mean, it's new to us cause we just heard it like a couple of weeks ago, but, uh, right. You know, this one doesn't sound that more advanced than the last one, um, which is a compliment to Hit Boy. Um, you know, his music at least doesn't get stale after a year. So we'll see how well, I, it fares in 10 or 5. I think that I think that the, it was done on purpose, you know, to have this sound like King's Disease 1. Um, yeah. I don't know if they were going for the you know, the, the change up. But I, I'm sure Hit Boy can change it up. I think that they just went with that, that direction so that it could just sound like one project, or at least in my opinion. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, man. Uh, what are your three favorite tracks on this record and what's the best beat you think? The best beat, man. Well, um, you know, I think my three favorites, I mean, Death Row East is dope. I love the history, the nostalgia, the story. Um, the beat was pretty cool, too, man. Um, that one's good. I like Rare because of the versatility, um, how the beat went from chill to, like, upbeat. And mm. then it just finished off really strong, too. Yeah. So that was really cool. And then... Oh, man, I don't know which. This third track is a hard one for me to choose for, but I'm going to go with my Bible. Yeah. Um, those would be my three favorites, and I think my favorite out of those three probably Rare. Yeah, Rare was um, really good. Just, they both showcased some really good, you know, talents there. Nas with the lyrics and the and the flow. And then, of course, Hit Boy on the beat, like uh, we were talking about earlier. Mm, yeah. So the three picks of mine, I'm going to go with Death Row East, Rare, and No Phony Love, featuring Charlie Wilson. No phony Love, nice. Those are the three that I circled as my faves. Mm -hmm. um, Did, go ahead. Do you have a standout out of those three? Uh, you know, geez, I don't know. I think Rare is the gem of this record. Yeah. I think it's the gem gem, you know. Death Row East is really fun for us because yeah. we were alive around that time. And it, it meant something more to us, you know, than just TMZ shit, you know. It was yeah, a, exactly. We, we made that music. I mean, we were fans of that shit. Like, we liked our football teams, you know? That was like, yeah. you know. Dude, these guys were fuck like. Fuck your CDs and all that shit. You know? Yeah, like, like, fuck your CDs, man. This is the shit you need to listen to. These guys were like right. heroes to us, man. So, as, I mean, we were kids, you know, and you're looking yeah. at the, you look, we look up to these guys, and we did. You know, they were something else. Well, they were else, bigger man. than life. Bigger yeah, than for life. Sure. They, were, they were almost like superheroes in a sense. You know, yeah. like they were just these, these big, like, personas that just, I mean, yeah, for sure. so big when you're a kid. Yeah, and, you know, just hearing Nas's perspective on it was a lot of fun, and I, I liked it. I liked hearing um, what what he saw, you know, the Death Row t-shirts and how crazy things were getting. And it's not something we hear from Nas a lot, you know, Death Row, Suge Knight shit. Um. Yeah, but Rare, I think, really showcased uh, Hit Boy and Nas's skills. Like, he's still he's still the best New York backpack rapper or whatever you want to call him, you know. I don't think he's that backpacky, but I think he's still one of the best out there doing it in New York anyways. Um, I would say that for, like, Honorable mentions, uh, YKTV, and then uh, moments for me. Now, my okay, honorable mentions for me is definitely, you know, I definitely have to count my Bible, and uh, I do like Count Me In. 
I thought this was a cool track. Nice. So, yeah. Anyways, my favorite lyrics got to come from the Bible track where he, let's see, he says, speak gospel for the next generation. You can have it all. Just don't side with Satan. I've seen it take down most of the greatest hotel suites, Hollywood stars hang in the other side of what you think is fly. Your jewelry can be cursed. And so can your ride. Let that soak in your mind. Just good shit, man. You know, he's not like going for crazy wordplay or flipping things around, you know, just to, you know, make his verbs do nutty things yeah. or whatever. Like Eminem was a good example of that, you know, just like a try hard. He's not like a try hard. He's just, um, it's just uh, effortless, like like Snoop Dogg in in his days now. You know, like the rhymes are just effortless. Yeah, Eminem, you can tell that there's effort being put into it. The, there's no way you can rap like he raps without trying, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, without not being that a try there's hard. anything wrong with it, but. <laughs> Like Nas and Snoop Dogg are just throwing it out now. Yeah. You know, they don't, there is no effort. They don't even really think about it. I feel like they're just telling a story, you know? Yeah. So that's a good, that's a good, uh, comparison. I think the way Eminem raps and the way like Nas and Snoop rap one tries super hard. And these two guys are at a point where they just make it seem easy, you know, really effortless. Um, that just tells you where they're at, man. You know, it's, uh, it's dope. So I don't remember the lyrics exactly, but the second verse of, um, rare was really cool where he starts out something along the lines of levels of Tarantino curbing my ego. I don't remember how that one goes, but like the beat switches up and his flow switches up almost has like a Rick Ross flow. Yeah. I don't know if you kind of remember that, but no, I do. That was a cool part for me. Yeah, the whole Rare song was pretty uh, epic, I thought. Um, I know when I was listening to it, you know, there were times when I was just listening to this at the gym, and, you know, I just had to look down at my watch to see, like, what track is this, man? Because this is insane. <laughs> and I just had to, like, make note in my make a mental note, like, okay, <laughs> study that track a little, man. That's going to be a good one, I think. And uh, I think, you know, Rare is that track, like we said. It's like the probably the crown jewel of the record so all in all man how are you scoring this king's disease 2 king's disease 2 i like this better than part one i think but it's hard to say you know like um i guess if i have to i'm gonna give it an eight i think i gave it a 7.5 on part one Mm -hmm. but uh i'll hit this one with an eight Nice. Solid effort. It was good. I had fun listening to it. Yeah, I had a lot of fun listening to it. Um, it was easier to get into than like Snoop's album, which was in 2019. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I did not, I was not blown away upon first listen. Um, second yeah. listen, it started to sink in though, and I got it. Um, I think that the first one blew me away. And at least the beginning and the end. This one didn't really blow me away, but it kept me interested and I enjoyed it. Um, So I kind of have to score it higher than I did part one, though, because it's very consistent. There's, yeah. uh, it, It's just a really consistent album, and I didn't find that I had to skip anything on it. Um, you know? Yeah, you're right. So it's one of those that I could listen from you know, beginning to end, uh, the Eminem is kind of not my thing, but Hit Boy and EPMD kind of carry that track for me, so I can deal with it. I'm gonna give it a nine. I'm gonna give it nine, nine. Death Row T's. That's my score. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nine Death Row nice. T's. So well, yeah, yeah. You know, I think like part two isn't necessarily like a you know King's Disease one feel like was more structured and had like a theme and you know you look at the track listing and you know a lot of it matches with you know what king's disease is supposed to be themed and then part two is more of like a b-side or maybe you know how, how i don't know how i would describe kd2 it's it 
it's a good part two to part one, but you're not going to get that, like, I guess the, the full on theme that part one gave you. It's a different vibe. Yeah. But they still kind of sound like they go together, you know, like. Definitely do. You could have made a double disc out of this, but. Yeah, I agree. But why make this wait that long? made one. Yeah, I think if we had to listen to this as a double disc, I don't know if our opinion would have been the same. You know, it'd be hard to dissect all of it or to digest it all. You know what I mean? So Yeah, um, that that's a good point there. I don't know how this, if we were listening to this like a double album, how it would rate, you know? Like, yeah. That would that'd be kind of fun to do is try to rank it up uh, against some of the other double albums. But Yeah. But it's not a double I, I don't album. I like it. No, it's not. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun though. Yeah. Good shit, and it, you could listen to it like a double album. Yeah. So, so is Soundwave a Nas fan now? That's what the people want to know. Because is what is are is is you a Nas fan now? Oh, am I a Nas fan? Yeah. Um, you know, I don't mind me some Nas. You know, yeah. like um. I think I was just more hard headed than anything back. Man, yeah, we we loved then. to haze Nas back in the day when we first started yeah. leaking him into our playlist. Like fucking Nas. But it was more just in good fun. It wasn't anything like, you know, Nas. Just that that style was different for me back then. Yeah, for sure. I'm me too. more matured in what I like, so I can definitely appreciate some Nas. You know, especially I- when. Like rap nowadays, I can't connect to it at all. Yeah, like I just can't connect with the rap. Yeah, and you know we've talked about this before. Like if we go back in time and just like look at all the CDs and the people that we didn't give a chance to, like we're like fuck that mm-hmm. shit. It's like nah, man. Let me listen to some of that now, you know? Because like yeah. we're starving for good rap these days. Because we old. The- yeah, I mean, music was so good. It was so saturated with good shit back then. Like, we were hating on good shit. <laughs> I know. Because there was so much of it. <laughs> there was so much shit. We we got the luxury of hating on good shit. <laughs> it's like we had too much of a good thing. We just had to hate on some of it. I don't yeah. know, man. But yeah. I thought about, uh, you know, one day we'll have to make an episode about the rappers that got better in time. And I would have yeah. to say Nas did. For me, anyways, that Nas got better in time. You know, I would put MC8 up there as well. And then I'd have to think about the other rappers that I think got better in time. So, very yeah. interesting stuff. Hey, I think, oh, that, yeah. I think that's going to wrap it up, man. You got any final thoughts? We kind of ran through uh, everything. You gave the score. Yeah, it was- no, not really, man. Um, you know, it's just a pleasure listening to those two albums. You know, I'm going to try to incorporate those two into my uh, listening routine a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. Pretty dope stuff. Good listen, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you hanging in there a couple weeks of NAS, man. Pretty dope. Oh, yeah. Um, Didn't think I could do it, but I did it. You did, did it, it, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hey, I like I uh, I appreciate it, and I like getting into some of this new shit from the old cats. You know? Yeah, Snoop Dogg, oh, nice. it, it, good stuff. Good to do it, hell yeah! All right, that's gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're checking us out on YouTube. Share us, whatever. You know, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Get at us, RapThrowback.com if you want to see the latest. And shit, I guess we out of the out of. I guess we out. We out of here, man. Yeah. Peace. Peace.